headed out to the job site. We finally hit the gravel road that takes us to where we're going to be drilling this well. And hopefully we'll be there in about the next two minutes. Okay. I want to see if... So we have like a, 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 a well area. So I was trying to see if... Because all this... I know that house behind the Porter John... That's 400 foot. The house behind it's 400 foot. The one way in the back, 600 foot. I don't know about that house. It's probably deep too. All these areas are deep. So I wanted to see if these little doodads, it's windy. That's uh, unfortunate. Let's do. I'm gonna do a grid pattern. Cause it says 50 foot, which we're way off 50 foot from the from that. Let's see here. Huh, check that out. The wind is blowing. Look at that. be helpful if the wind wasn't blowing <clears throat> it's about where they crossed last time <laughs> just walk a grid pattern and see what it looks like foot and put a smudge in the ground right there let's try to do this can't be that close to the building doesn't matter if it crosses there or not I need to be closer to this flag huh where's my other divot so we're gonna put another footprint right here so it's crazy because I've got my divot here and then I've got my other divot right there at the end of the rod. Well, yeah, right there. It's right here. <clears> that would be crazy if it's an actual line. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you when I get over the divot. I'm over the divot. That's crazy. Okay. So, if we've got one here, one here, and one here, that was originally where they wanted the well. I'm going to take it, put it right there, and that's where we're going to drill our hole. I'm going to try to get on that within about six to eight inches. Okay, let's back this bad boy in. We got it on site. I want to show you. I'm a little off the flag, but here was my one of my divots. And here is my flag. And then here was my other divot. So if we look at this, we're kind of like right in line with where it's going to be. And we're going to be right in line with this, which puts us right here. Is exactly where the hole is going to end up going which is in between the two so if there is something under the ground here that's causing that with the dowels and rods we're going to find it all right we're going to go ahead start getting the truck all loaded get our wood underneath the truck and uh, get this bad boy in the air let's go ahead and hit the go button
roughly at around 33 foot and I just encountered bedrock. If you notice the difference in color here versus the color here, we drilled through about 30 foot of this really loamy sandy material and then we finally hit some granite. That's a piece of granite right there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to keep drilling. I'm going to drill me about a 15 foot socket. Probably set, I don't know, about 50 foot of casing. That way I get a nice deep socket and I cut out any possible chances of surface contaminant water.
are currently around 125, 135 foot. Um, I just kind of blew the well for a minute or so. I wanted to see what I was making as of yet. I'm making about a gallon to a gallon and a half a minute. Um, you know, at 130 foot. So it's not enough. We're gonna keep going. I do have a little bit, um, so that's a good thing. Now, when we set casing, I had hit bedrock at like 23 foot, something like that. But I set, no, it was 33 foot. I hit bedrock at 33 foot. I decided to set 52 foot of casing, so I drilled really far into bedrock. The reason why is because of that pond. I didn't want that pond to have any effect on that well. So that's why I put the casing down deep. When you do that and you drill into bedrock um, like that far, if you, if you have a shallow vein, you're gonna have to case that out and, it, and it's not usable. But in this case, if there was a shallow vein, it might be connected to the pond and I didn't want that to happen. So that's why I did that. Now check that out. It's a whole lot bigger in real life. <laughs> cool. All right, we're gonna keep drilling. I'll catch y'all back up when we get a little bit deeper. It's getting down to 23 degrees over the weekend, so we had to blow all the lines out. Make sure everything's drained, because if it's not, it's going to be frozen. Okie doke. Truck's on the ground. Well, typical for this area. Typical for this area. Well, we're back here again. We've got more drill rods on the back of the water truck, so we're going to continue on to drill this well to about 600 foot or until we hit more water. So I'll catch y'all up once we get more water or we get to the bottom of the hole. Alright, we are at the bottom of 605 foot. We drilled all the rods. We still still doesn't seem like we have too much more water. I'll know more here in a little bit after I wash it up and blow the hole and uh, see exactly what we're making. 
but this well seems to be like it's going to be a prime candidate for a hydrofrac. Well, we're all finished with the well, got it all pulled out, laid over, and grouted. And we make a whopping two gallons a minute. It's a whole lot of grit. All right, so let's talk about this for a second. Um, my drill report. We set 52 foot of casing, and by the time we were at 120 foot, we had a gallon, gallon and a half a minute. So I think at the end of day one, that's where we got all of our water. Now, when I was at 345 foot, 385 foot, and about 415 foot, I went through three different soft layers of rock. You can always tell by the sound of the percussion of the hammer and how fast it's cutting if you're in a soft zone. Now typically soft zones are where areas where you should produce more water or a lot of water. In this case, it gave us a, you know, a small increase uh, based off what we saw at the end of the day. So we stamped it two gallons a minute. Now a typical average household three to 400 foot pump on two gallons a minute can run just fine. If you're gonna do some irrigation, lawn watering, uh, you know, crops and stuff like that, you can't do that with two gallons a minute. So, you got a 600 foot borehole. Our notes, we wrote down that we have uh, water by 120, so somewhere between 52 and 120, we've got water. Then, below 120, we've got more soft zones down there at 380 foot. So, if the customer doesn't have enough water, the notes that we have from the drill log will let us know if we frack the well, we can say frack the well at 80 foot, we'll end up pushing on that 120 foot zone. Then we can frack it again, we can go below the 120 zone, we can go to say 140, 145, swell up the packer there, that isolates the 120 zone so we're not pushing on it anymore, and then we'll be pushing on the veins below that. So that's what is important about taking notes and drilling because anybody else we wouldn't know that information so we wouldn't know to do that during the frack process now we're just going to let the homeowner use this well uh once his house gets built you know if he has a problem in the future then we'll go to frack it but a lot of our wells end up like this um we're surrounded by 400 and 600 footers so there's no guarantee that you're going to get water uh you know shallow here anyways um from talking to him they had to put the drain field like 800 feet away because when they dug for the um, septic system, they hit bedrock. So they know that bedrock is close here and you know, nothing you can do. So dowsing rods, did they work? Maybe, maybe not, who knows. Um, they don't tell you where water is. They just tell you where in a nominally is under the ground. So should you ever pay for that service to be done? I would say no. If someone's capable of doing it, cool. But if you're thinking about paying somebody to do it, I would think twice. Because I'm gonna say 90% of the time, you're actually gonna get a good well, regardless if you douse or not. Um, but that other 10%, you run into these. I've drilled 800 footers, 900 footers behind well dowsers. And they just said, oh, you missed it by a foot. That's not how well, <laughs> well drilling works. That's not how veins work. That's not how aquifers work. Um, you don't miss it by a foot. Um, you know there is certain areas but we are designated to drill where the county tells us to drill based off the plot of land where the house is going to be where the septic system is going to be is the house ever going to be termite treated power lines all these things come into variables when we get a permit to drill a well so that's just my two cents on the matter <laughs>